PNC is proud to support Business Forward, where local leaders discuss the challenges and opportunities in how we do business in Central Illinois. Welcome to Business Forward. I'm your host, Matt George. Joining me tonight, Jenny McCoy. Jenny is owner of Corpo Bello Full Service Salon, Day Spa and Boutique, owner of the Barber Lounge, and owner of the Summer Summit S Salon Academy of Illinois. I, that's just a, so many things I couldn't even spit it out. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I was excited to uh, have you on for many reasons. One, when you own so many businesses, mm -hmm. it's like you're sitting here going, okay, that's entrepreneurship 101 right mm -hmm. there, which right. I love on this show. Um, but let's start off with you because I know your family. You have a great family. You have a okay husband, yeah. but a great family. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I think it all started back when I was young. Okay. My father was an entrepreneur, and I got to see the flexibility and freedom in his life. And I thought that is something that hmm. I would love to have for myself, but also to be able to create for other people. I, I like that. Yeah. So you saw that as a kid. Mm -hmm. And did, so did you have the, the normal thoughts and dreams, well, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to go and then go work somewhere? Or did you, from the get-go, think, I'm going to be an entrepreneur? Oh, no, I thought after high school I was going to go to college. Okay, that's what I was wondering. And it's funny because I ask that question to a lot of business owners mm -hmm. because I think it's an important question. Sure. You know, there's a lot of people who are visionaries who sit there at young ages and come mm -hmm. up with these ideas, and then there's people who just go through the system, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it hits them. Yeah. And they go, you know what? I want to work for myself. Yeah, yeah. So where are you originally from? From Peoria. You're from Born Peoria. Born and raised, never left. So did you go, I think Dunlap, is yep. that right? Dunlap? Yep. All right. So what business did your dad have? So it was a medical um, distributing business. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So let's talk about, and we're going to talk about your core business, but I want to talk about the name for a second. Okay, Because sure. I like the name. I, yeah. I obviously struggled in saying all of the names, but Corpo Bell. Mm -hmm. So when um, I first developed the company, I wanted to make sure that it was a talking point in itself. Being a new business to the area, I really wanted to create some buzz. So I thought, how can we do that? Encompassing the beauty and wellness industry. And I thought that if I could put it in another language, then people would have to ask, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? And if I had a nickel for every time somebody asked what it meant, I'd be a very wealthy woman. Yeah. But yeah, that's how, I, that's how I came up with it. So Corpo Bello means beautiful body in Italian. Beautiful body in Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's very creative if you think about it, because yeah. it, I have thought about that, mm -hmm. never asked you about it, but right. it's just not a simple... A simple uh, phrase, so that's right. cool. How many employees do you have? Um, for all of our companies, about 60 to 65. Yeah, and I'm going to get towards the end of the show, I'm going to talk about the economic impact of yeah. an entrepreneur because when you start thinking of starting a company, and I, I'm relating this just to you, mm -hmm. did you think I could go from 10 to 20 to 30? Do you think that way or did you think I just have to build my company? I think that I just, I had so much more passion for the industry first. Okay. And in the back of my mind, I just knew that it would naturally come at the time that it needed to be there. Well, how did you come up with the passion for the industry? I mean, where did that come from? Um, providing a platform for, for people to thrive, honestly. Okay. Yeah. And so did you, what type of training and schooling and stuff did, do you have to go through to do so what you do? Or I, did you just go the entrepreneur route? Right. So I graduated, um, I graduated high school three and a half years in and went straight to cosmetology school. Okay. And that's the only post-secondary education that I have is cosmetology school. So when you went to cosmetology, when you went to school, did you sit there and go, okay, now I, I just going to be a hairdresser or now I'm going to kind of build my business or did you have both of those in mind? So I, um, I was working at a salon in Peoria okay. and there were a lot of changes going on in the salon and I thought, well, 
if I'm going to make a move, I didn't want it to be just a lateral move. So I thought, you know, what could I do? It, it, that still that entrepreneurial blood was, was running through my bones. So I thought I'm going to open up my own salon. Still again, not, not the grand vision that my husband and I currently have now, but enough to say we can have people, we can show them the ropes, we can, you know, pour our passion into people and see what comes of it. You know, what's interesting is when you have a business like this and you're just starting off, you know, I can just picture you and your husband, Tyler, sitting there and talking at night and going, well, if you did this, you're mm -hmm. already doing this now. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you three exit over here? Yeah, and I have to say that is, that's his mindset. He's very much like the architecture mindset get get a get a problem find a solution and then get on to the next and i'm not so much like that so i think that because i'm a little bit more conservative in my leaps and he's he's such a big thinker that both of us together have been able to create some really cool things yeah but what i find interesting about the dynamic of both of you is number one you work together but mm -hmm. two you have to have your mindset in my opinion to start the business off sure because his mindset might have derailed it because you could have gone all in mm -hmm. too soon. Mm -hmm. So you took these baby steps. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to call them that. Yeah, they were. And then all of a sudden you bring in a different mindset mm -hmm. and now you're running two tracks down your head. Absolutely. I mean, that's how it is, yeah. right? Yeah, I really think it's a, we are running a, a dream machine right now. And, and I go back to the 60, 70 employees because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always had the mindset when I was at Children's Home and other places, I'd always sit there and say, you know, it's as CEO or as owner or whatever you want to call it, it, it's my job to not only take care of the business and the mission and my mm -hmm. own family, mm -hmm. but it's also my job to take care of my team and their family. Absolutely. Not just the, it, not just the employees, but also their family. Yes. And I know you well enough to know that you have that same mindset mm -hmm. because I know people that work for you mm -hmm. and you have people that have been there a while. Yeah, yeah. So what's the magic sauce there? You know... I don't, uh, treating people like you want to be treated, yeah. honestly. And I think it, it really can be that simple. Don't expect anything out of somebody that you're not willing to do yourself and treat them like, like you would want to be treated. And I know that that sounds very simple. Um, sometimes in business, it's not implemented that way. But I, I carry myself with that every single day. And it has, it seemed to work for us. Yeah, it, it's yeah. funny. I mean, there's a lot of leadership books out there that talk mm -hmm. about that the owner, the CEO should be doing every job. Mm -hmm. And the people that are successful, I do find, do that. I'm going to give you an example. You're not going to probably remember this, but five, six years ago, I asked for a donation for one of our events and you actually delivered it to me. Mm -hmm. And so when you sit there and say, okay, you're a busy woman. Mm -hmm. You know, you're running a, a, a big business and you've got a lot of people. You've got a lot of liability, too. Right. And you're sitting there and I said, hey, will you donate a whatever it was? And all of a sudden you hop in the car and go, man, I, I'm, I'll just drop it by. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. So there is a culture and a mindset right there. Sure. And people that work with you, mm -hmm. I, I like to call them your team, so mm -hmm. to speak. So they come in and they see that and emulate that and want to continue to work with you. Right. That's awesome. Right. All right, locations. So do you have more than your your main location? Yes. And so I'm not our, talking the Barber College, I'm mm -hmm. just talking Corporate Bell. Yeah, so our flagship location is in Peoria, off Will and Olds, and then our um, second satellite location is in Washington, Illinois. Yeah, so two great locations. Mm -hmm. The uh, Will and Olds location's in the perfect spot. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so when you talk about now, I'm going to sound really silly in some of these questions because sure. I'm just not one of these spa guys. Yeah, it's okay. But I do want to go through some of the services that you offer. So you do offer massage, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Now, I ask, I'm going to ask all these questions because when you're building a business, you have to align yourself with all these different experts. Mm -hmm. So how do you sit there and go, okay, I need hairdressers over here. I need massage specialist over here because you can't just grab somebody off the street and say right. hey go do it go right. rub that neck down <laughs> right 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 they have to be qualified you're paying for that quality therefore the customer pays for the quality right, right. yes so we have um, in our facilities what's called an associate program which is for all of our departments okay. so if we have a student that has recently graduated somebody new to the area 
um, looking for employment, we kind of run them through what we call kind of our master's program of the beauty and wellness industry. So they get proper training, they get some um, corporal bellow culture training, um, mm. they get paired with a higher level service provider so they can make sure that, that all the things that they need in a brand new company can, um, can be supported. Okay, so let's, let's focus on training for a minute. Okay. Because I always find this part, the part of a business that's the hardest mm -hmm. to implement. How did you come up with a training process, almost like a, your own school, so yeah. to speak? So, to be honest with you, is that we fell on our face quite a number of times and knew that we had to develop something that was going to work for us long term. That's normal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so how long did it take you to come up with a formalized training program? I would say probably 12 to 18 months. That's not bad. Yeah. So you feel pretty solid. So let me ask you this. Someone, let, let's say my daughter's coming through and she, she's looking for a job and you sit here and you grab her and you say, here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You put her through program A to Z mm -hmm. and then you train her. What makes that person get trained by you and not, and then leave? So is that possible? I'm guessing. I mean, so yeah, yeah. it's, it's 100%. We set up, um, correct expectations. I would say yeah. that you know, our company is going to give this much time and energy into you. Um, that is something that we do expect back. And um, a, a lot of serv new service providers too come into the company. We have um, student nights for them. We have job shadowing days. So okay. most of our employees don't come in blindly. They have a little bit of a grasp of what our company can offer them as yeah, so I'm going back to that visual. You and Tyler sitting there at night mm -hmm. mapping things out. And here's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'm bringing this up, because I think it's very important. You've got the beginnings of a business and the visions of other business. Mm -hmm. You've got the training piece, which is very important. But then I'm going to go to morale and culture. Okay. The morale and culture piece mm -hmm. is what keeps these people, yes. this, these team members, on the bench, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... You have to have all of those. If you if there's a hiccup, and and I always go to the you know there's right now there's a teacher shortage. Right now there's an RN shortage. There's so many different uh, nonprofit shortage, and and it's it's something that actually drives me nuts. So I ask every entrepreneur and every CEO that I talk to, you know, how can we fix this? And what I've come to the conclusion of is that really at the end of the day, the culture is what keeps someone. Mm -hmm. Um, aligns, keeps someone wanting to come to work each day because yeah, you're not I only agree. in the feel good business, so to speak, mm -hmm. be because I, I remember I was telling you earlier about my grandma, mm -hmm. you know, she would always, she couldn't wait. Every Wednesday was her hair day. Yeah. And that was her special day of feeling pretty mm -hmm. and feeling good about herself. So you have to put smiles on people's faces mm -hmm. every day, right? Yeah. Yeah. We call it in our, um, companies that we're on stage all the time. That's great. I yeah, love it. We're on stage and, and our companies also have a, um, we ha what's called our happiness project, which is a work-life balance. So majority of our service providers don't work more than six hours per shift. And they also don't work more. Our full time is between 24 and 30 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would make some people happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you have your own family, and, and sure. so you understand, you can relate to everybody. So um, the other thing that I find interesting, and I don't even have this written down, but I was, I was wondering now, is you get those pieces in place, then how does the marketing and the branding of the name, mm -hmm. uh, how do you implement that? It's because that's a whole other skill set. Yeah, I think that you just have to make sure that you are exceeding guest expectations, and a lot of it, they, they, fortunately for us, they've done themselves, okay. our marketing. Yeah, word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. Um, we have a social media uh, director that does all of our socials now. Um, and we also have a leadership team um, that, that hones in on each department that we have in our companies that kind of is the overseer. So your role is owner. Mm -hmm. What's Tyler's role? Everything else. Everything else. I'm with personnel. He's everything else. Do you have, so, you know, you still have to have a, an accounting system mm -hmm. or some sort of system yeah, there. Absolutely. HR. Mm -hmm. 
you know, sometimes just, I, the reason why I'm bringing this up is sometimes people will sit there and they'll go, it's just a haircut place. Yeah. It's a business. Yeah. And it's big business. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to change, at least just in our own local communities, is that it's a thriving business. It's a, it's a super important business. And um, we're, we're doing a lot for the community in terms of turning out professionals that um, support local commerce, all of the things, employment opportunities. Uh, it is, it's a, it's a true business. I think long ago they thought that just exactly what you said, it's a place to get your hair cut. Um, yeah. After COVID, I think it's, it, we've become, you know, looked at as a little bit more important, you know, of a, of a place now, not just our company, but the, the beauty industry as a whole. And th that's encouraging for me to see. You know what I love about your business is when I walked in there, the cleanliness. Mm -hmm. I'm a clean freak, mm -hmm. and I've said it a few times on the show. So when I go into businesses, whether I eat somewhere or go in and whatever it may be, obviously I'm not getting haircuts from you. Right. But I want it to be spotless. Yeah. And your your place is very, very clean. Yeah. It's the old cliche, like you have one time to make a first impression, right? Yeah. So if they've seen you on your website, okay, if they've called you on the phone, but if they're just walking in, you know, it, that's your one time. That's right. I mean, it's the linkages. It's, it's the things where you sit here and go, what's word of mouth going to do mm -hmm. if you get someone in there and you tell your mom, hey, go in, go in here. And then she goes in there and it's dirty. Right. Exactly. It's irrelevant. Yeah. So very You're correct. cool. Yes. Very cool. So what other services do you offer at Corporate Bella? Then I want to talk about. Yeah. So um, all um, hair services, all spa services and all barber services in our companies. So you actually have a real barber in there, mm -hmm. which is cool a because shop. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Are you going to go get one of those little signs, the red, we white, might. blue sign? Yeah. I mean, that would be kind of cool it, to yes. get an old fashioned yes. one. I yeah, don't know. absolutely. All right. So um, talk about, well, I'm, I was going to bring up one more thing. So my daughters are, I talk about them every show, my older daughters, they're 29 and 27. Okay. I've never seen girls go to a wedding every weekend, mm -hmm. it seems like, mm -hmm. and they're going to places like yours. Yes. It's like the thing to do right now, yeah. isn't it? Tell yeah. me about that, like what do they do? Oh my goodness, so it's probably one of our biggest departments in our salon company are just weddings as it is. But um, hair and makeup, what is special occasion hair, uh, makeup, we do traditional and airbrush makeup, uh, faux lashes. I mean, it, it is quite the to-do and it is a <laughs> wonderful part of our business. It's, it's so fun. Well, I picture, obviously the hair is one thing, mm -hmm. but I'm looking and she, my daughter Carly sends me a picture and she's got strawberries over here. She's oh, got a yeah. flute of something mm -hmm. drinking over Champagne, here. Her hair's yeah. up here. I'm just yeah. sitting here going, what is going on right, here? Right, right. And the beautiful part about our companies is that you, it is kind of a one-stop shop. Yeah, you I can get all it. your skin services, your hair services, your nail services, get you prepped for the wedding. I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. So let's talk about, well, I'm all over the board today because okay. I have like 5,000 questions I want to ask you. I, I told myself I'm not going to bring up COVID anymore, but I do mm -hmm. have to bring up COVID sure. with you because your business was one mm -hmm. very similar to a restaurant that was just almost demolished, mm -hmm. you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. So here you are an entrepreneur and you mm -hmm. talk about getting your legs cut out from under you. Mm -hmm. That's probably what you mm -hmm. felt like. And then there had to be a time, and I'm asking you, did, was there a time where you sat there and said, you know what, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity. I'm gonna actually blow up when this is, and this is gonna mm -hmm. be my time. Mm -hmm. Did and you I have, think that? I have to say, me personally, I did not. My husband, Tyler, thought about love that the it. whole entire way through. I love yeah, it. Yeah, th this was our <clears> time. <throat> Well, and the people that I've talked to in businesses that mm -hmm. are thriving or changing, I, I don't like to use the word pivoting, but I'll use it. It's easy. Yeah. But to make that shift, mm -hmm. it's huge. Mm -hmm. And you not only made the shift, you scaled. Mm -hmm. So here you've got a whole handful of businesses across the country that are going by the wayside. The plus of it is, mm -hmm. not for their businesses, but the plus over here was you had 50 new businesses coming right. on. 50 going away. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, the businesses that kind of just 
stood and waited yeah. and kind of watched. Yeah. And that was you. Mm -hmm. and, and I was watching it. I noticed it because mm -hmm. I follow you on Facebook and everything else. And you're sitting there and all of a sudden start going up. Yeah. And that's entrepreneurial beast mode right mm -hmm. there is how mm -hmm. I look at it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, but how did you handle the employee piece? Because there's a morale piece tied to this. I think let's go back to the cultural piece of your company, okay. right? That was all of it. Um, weekly Zoom meetings, keeping everybody abreast of the situation, um, getting you know CDC information out to everybody all at one time. We were constantly connected. Gotcha. Um, and I think that that was so much help for even the mental health of our employees. How do you stay sharp? Because you're sitting here with people and people who do like your hair, mm -hmm. there's a talent. Mm -hmm. And now you're not practicing. Yeah. Like, how do you stay sharp? Yeah, just uh, you practice. Okay. You, you, mannequins, yeah. family. You just you keep practicing. Okay, that's yeah. what I was wondering about. All right, new ventures. I love it. Yeah. Other businesses. Sure. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the barber school. Cosmetology school. Cosmetology. Yeah, absolutely. School. Let's talk about that. Okay. Tell me about it. So. Let's go back 20 years when I was just you know a stylist in the industry and didn't think much forward 20 years, I knew that there had to be more for our communities, right? We have been blessed to have a lot of counsel and a lot of people in our, in our circle for the last, I would say five to 10 years um, that have shown me that there's more to this industry than your typical beauty school, right? In order to make it to the industry, you not only have to have technical, but you also have to have the business skill. Yes. This is a business. <laughs> You know, whether, whether you're an employee of yourself or an employee of somebody else, you have to be taught that business. And without that, you know, there's burnout, there's um, not an environment to thrive. Um, and our area needs that. So we have partnered with um, Summit Salon Academy. Um, we, have, we are opening our own Summit Salon Academy of Illinois. It'll house a cosmetology program, an aesthetics program, and a barber program to start with. Wow. So yeah. what is the goal of that? So the goal is to turn out um, wonderful tradespeople that college is not for them, that they have a creative mindset, they have a skill set that they want to show the world, and we want to give them the tools to become successful in doing exactly that. So is your goal for them to transition into your business mm -hmm. kind of like OSF and Unity or Carl not Mal. necessarily. Okay, not necessarily. You Our, just want to produce people because there's a sector piece is what we're talking sure, about right here. Sure, you want people. I, that's how I am with nonprofit. Right, I, is more kids need to dream mm -hmm. of being nurses mm -hmm. and firemen mm -hmm. and nonprofit people and special ed teachers. Yeah, and your business. Right. Right, so we just did um, a huge weekend with Skills USA. I don't know if you're familiar with I, I, I had them on the show, I yeah, had the director. Yeah, absolutely, which um, it fuels my passion even more that there are high school kids that are starting this dream you know, and passion for the trades industry and, and the cosmetology, barbering, and aesthetics industry. And seeing that and seeing that, that there, are, there is support for us, not only as a cosmetology, aesthetics, and barber school, but even for students in high school, that this could be a path, a, a very lucrative path that they could take for their career. And I don't think people realize that. It, it, it not only can be a lucrative path, but it could also give them the opportunity to dream mm -hmm. and do what you're doing. Right, absolutely. You know what I like about Tyler coming into the mix, and mm -hmm. I'm not just saying this because him and I are friends, but it, it brings a different grit yeah. It really does yeah. because you, you brought it, you just said it. There's a business aspect to mm -hmm. it. And you can sit there and go Groundhog Day every day and it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But there's times you have to strategically make a move to be cream of the crop. Yeah, absolutely. And that is 100% what he's brought to our companies. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm going to think of a title for him. I'll come okay, up with that a little offline. Awesome. I got to think of a funny slash serious title we'll for get him business cards time. made well, i want to end with this <clears throat> community mm -hmm. you both love this community your business loves the community um i just really think businesses like yours are what communities all across mm -hmm. central illinois and across the united states they need them because you have community first at mind mm -hmm. agree yeah 100 percent 
And what I've noticed with the team that you have, you actually have people, you've hired people that have that same type of mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. So I, I always think about when people are hiring people for their team, you know, are you hiring talent mm -hmm. sometimes? Are you hiring what, but you're also hiring good people. Mm -hmm. And I think the talent can come. The good person, I'm glad you the good person is just <clears throat> within somebody. So hiring the good person, I think first and foremost, you can teach the talent. You can't, you can't teach, you know, the that, mindset. That's very, very refreshing to hear. So mm -hmm. Jenny McCoy, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're proud to have you and thank Tyler you. in this community. I'm Matt George, and this is another episode of Business. Thanks for tuning in to Business Forward, brought to you by PNC. PNC Bank, National Association, member FDIC.